Benchmarking is an important mechanism for introducing accountability in service delivery. In 2009, the Ministry of Urban Development, Government of India, launched the Service Level Benchmarking Initiative for Water Supply, Wastewater, Solid Waste and Stormwater Drainage. The past project at SEPT University has established an online system in the states of Gujarat and Maharashtra for annual collection of performance information and monitoring. Over the past four years, cities have increasingly begun to adopt this SLB framework. The past project aims to guide service providers in improving performance through a benchmarking process. The performance improvement component of past project focuses on development of tools and approaches to improve delivery of city level services for water supply, wastewater and solid waste management. Now one of these is a decision supporting tool for city wide service oriented performance improvement plans referred as the performance improvement planning or PIP model. Traditionally, engineers in state level agencies or local governments have developed improvement proposals in the form of detailed project reports that depend on central or state government grants for funding. The DPR gets implemented only when the funds are made available and an agency is identified to construct infrastructure. Experiences from cities suggest that such investments are often unsustainable as technical and financial implications of operation and maintenance of infrastructure are usually ignored. In the absence of a financing plan for funding O&M costs and replacement costs, the infrastructure deteriorates with a negative impact on service levels. Unlike these typical infrastructure investment plans, performance improvement plans are service oriented. That is, they focus on improvement and service delivery. The performance improvement model of past project assesses the present situation of a city and consequently arrives at potential areas for infrastructure development that can improve service delivery and financial stability of the urban local body. The choice of these improvement options can have significant financial impacts and could yield different outcomes. A decision support tool therefore helps inform decision for development and selection of appropriate options. Test runs of this approach and the PIP model in selected cities in Gujarat and Maharashtra have provided valuable feedback to improvise the tool. This tool helps comparison of different options across technology, phasing and financing for improving water supply, wastewater and solid waste services. The impact of each option is reflected by improved service levels, additional revenues and costs required and sustainability with respect to municipal finances. The model also provides a multi-year activity plan and a financing plan for both capital and operation maintenance expenditure. Such detailed analysis for different options provide a basis for an informed debate at stakeholders consultation, cautioning against making sub-optimal choices which are financially unsustainable or do not improve service delivery. The PIP model follows a structured sequential process for preparation of improvement plans. It has three main modules. The performance assessment module captures baseline data and assesses present performance levels of urban water supply and sanitation. The action planning module focuses on designing of these actions to improve service delivery. The financial planning module emphasizes on evaluating municipal finances to meet financial requirements of the proposed actions. The model also allows comparison of various improvement options calibrated in the model. This tool is an Excel-based workbook with the worksheets following the same three module structure. The introduction sheet explains the steps of PIP preparation with links to the respective sheets. Performance assessment module comprises input sheets for water supply and sanitation information and finance information. Based on the inputs here, performance results are reported in the performance assessment sheet. Action planning module has three separate sheets for water supply, wastewater and solid waste plans. A concise report of the impact of these plans is presented in summary of PIP plan. The financial impact of proposed action plan is reported in the third module sheet of action plan finances leading to forecasting of municipal finances in next sheet. The financing plan sheet deals with actual formulation of key financial decisions. Summary of various PIP options calibrated in model can be compared in PIP options sheet. All the sheets use color codes to help 
a user identifies cells where data needs to be entered and cells that are system generated. Blue color is for data entry. First functional sheet of PIP model is for compilation of general information about the city. The user needs to mention base year for calibration of model for which baseline data will be input. Subsequently, the model will work out the scenarios for next 10 years. Next, basic contact details of concerned ULB officials and past project team involved in PIP preparation is to be entered. Performance assessment of water supply and sanitation is captured through performance measurement framework of past project. It approaches service performance through a set of performance indicators across four themes, namely coverage and equity, service levels and quality, efficiency in service operations, and financial sustainability. The four themes are elaborated by 29 key performance indicators covering every aspect of its service delivery. These KPIs include all the indicators of service level benchmarking as well. Each KPI is further detailed by a set of local action indicators to highlight contextual aspects in city. This three-tier framework thus facilitates review of improvement priorities and plan for short and medium term improvements. To capture such performance assessment holistically for any city, sound baseline data is required. This is envisaged as a sector-wide approach assessing entire value chain of a sector rather than focusing it as separate compartments. The first sheet of performance assessment module captures information for base year for demography, water supply, wastewater and solid waste services. For example, water supply service information is captured for water production, transmission, treatment, distribution network, storage reservoirs, consumer connection details, metering, and taxes and charges. Some of the data required in the model can be easily availed from ULB reports, while some will require conducting diagnostic studies and field. Some information, which might be non-existent, will need discussions with ULB officials to, to arrive at informed estimates. The financial information worksheet captures municipal finances of the urban local body. Data for the first five years is to be entered for the overall municipal account and separately for water supply, wastewater and solid waste sectors. The details are categorized as per revenue and capital accounts as suggested in national municipal account codes. A user may be required to recast the budget if it is not properly aligned on these lines. Additionally, property tax demand and details of collection balance for the preceding three years are to be entered. Based on the sectoral and finance information entered, level of services delivered by ULB is assessed. The aim is to assess trends and compare performance of ULB through simple dashboards for easy interpretation of results leading to identification of improvement priorities. Key performance indicators are reported and compared with benchmarks, state averages and class averages to assess the service gaps. Users can compare and prioritize areas that require attention for service performance improvement. Local contextual problems related to low performing key performance indicators can be identified with the help of local action indicators represented visually through subsequent graphs. For example, Water supply coverage for city and slums is expressed in terms of share of individual connections, group connections, stand posts, illegal connections and inhabited area without access to distribution network. These aspects lead to a set of locally relevant actions rather than emphasizing only on new infrastructure creation for improvement in services. A matrix is provided below compiling all these localized actions and KPIs that are influenced by these LAIs. The review of these KPIs and LAIs define the outline for performance improvement plan in terms of sectoral vision and goals compiled at the end of the sheet. Such analysis provides a more informed decision basis for stakeholder consultations to identify areas of focus and priority. The second module of this PIP model is action planning. There are separate sheets for formulation of action plan for all three sectors of water supply, wastewater and solid waste. The improvement actions prioritized in performance assessment module are to be calibrated here as individual project proposals. This calibration captures both aspects of impact of service levels as well as cost implications. 
A set of these calibrated actions will form an implementation plan for ULB across 10 years of plan period. Hence, this action plan must evolve through an iterative process of identifying appropriate actions, phasing and financing pattern. This module of PIP process captures the effect of all the calibrated improvement actions on service levels of the three subsectors across years. As discussed earlier, conventional infrastructure planning process looks at investments as standalone projects rather than an integrated service improvement plan. Under the proposed PIP approach, a multi-layered relationship is established between improvement actions and impact on service levels. Improvement in a performance indicator is the outcome of various actions calibrated in model. These actions in turn impact more than one indicator. For example, the KPI for the coverage of water supply is affected by multiple aspects like regularizing illegal connections, simplifying connection procedures, laying internal infrastructure lines in slums and so on. Now consider an action, say regularize illegal connections. It further has multiple relation with other indicators as shown here. PIP model not only takes into account all such interrelated implications in a sector, but also captures intersectoral effects. For example, an increase in quantity of water supplied not only will impact increase in per capita supply, but also increase in wastewater to be collected, capacity of wastewater treatment plants and related implications of municipal finances. Under PIP approach, Improvement actions are not limited to investments in new assets, but also include measures related to policy changes, process re-engineering and refurbishment of existing assets. These are often referred to as no-cost, low-cost measures, which can have significant influence on service levels. It enables ULBs to examine impacts of low-cost actions like reducing water losses, improving collection efficiency and other process re-engineering solutions. This approach assists ULBs to recognize the merits of planning for asset management and shifts focus from infrastructure creation to improving service delivery. Even for traditional investments, the PIP model enables an easy assessment of technology and management options. For example, for citywide sanitation solutions, options can be chosen between seaward or non-seaward proposals. The PIP model enables users to design each action in detail relating to its phasing, cost, revenue generation potential, and other design decisions. To facilitate action planning, all the actions are compiled in an easy-to-use tabular structure, along with graphs to show its impact in terms of performance improvement and financial requirement. To illustrate, let us activate improved condition of existing community and public toilets. This is a system refurbishment action wherein the condition of existing infrastructure will be improved to improve services. Easy to use tabular structures are provided to activate each action. Now there are various components in this tabular structure. The first is switch for activation or deactivation. This will include or exclude a particular action in the proposed action plan. Second is implementation period of any action. This is defined by providing phasing a user needs to enter expected start and end years of the project the table then has three sections baseline improvement and finance in baseline section all the base year information related to that action is provided for users reference to assess service gaps for the selected action information is provided for about number of non-functional community toilets as compared to total number of toilets and average households served per toilet seat. The improvement section then quantifies extent of improvement envisaged. For example, the city can decide to improve condition of let's say 60 toilets out of 75 non-functional toilets based on field level surveys. One can see the impact immediately in the chart beside showing overall coverage of sanitation services in the city. In this chart, each area graph represents an action that affects overall city level coverage. These charts help to better visualize the effect of actions on services and thus ease decision making process. The last section on finances deals with capital and operating costs involved for implementation. Details required for this action include block cost for refurbishing a seat, estimated operation and maintenance cost per month and expected revenue to be generated per month. 
Now such financial charts are provided for each theme consolidating aggregate capital expenditure, operating expenses and revenue generated from all the activated actions. Now to arrive at rational figures for all these actions, guidelines are also provided to assist the users. This can be referred by clicking on the learn more link above. Now similarly other actions in this sheet can be calibrated for all three sectors that is what water supply plan, wastewater plan and solid waste plan. The last sheet of this module summary of PIP plan shows the impact on service levels over 10 years due to proposed action plan which comprises all the actions activated. Service levels are assessed through a range of performance indicators. Key performance indicators are reported along with its corresponding local action indicators. Now, key performance indicators as defined by service level benchmark of Government of India are also reported here. They are in the end of this sheet. To analyze the impact of performance across plan period, traffic light analysis of red, yellow, green color codes is done with respect to benchmark values as suggested by SLB. Now, if the user thinks that there are some service gaps still, they can go back to the actions and modify the action plan. If the user considers the performance to be good, they can proceed to the next module of financial planning. The financing plan module formulates a plan to manage ULB finances after the impact of the proposed action plan for next 10 years. In this context, it is imperative to assess municipal financial health to sustain their existing operational expenditure and make new investments. Financially sustainable improvement plan is examined in relation to the possibility of meeting capital and operating expenditures through internal surplus, grants or external borrowing by the ULB. Using the PIP model, several improvement options can be simulated and analyzed in terms of their financial implications. The first sheet of financial planning is action plan finances. They are reported for all three sectors. All the improvement actions activated are compiled here with their phasing plan, year-wise capital expenditure requirement and operating expenditure for the action plan period. It can be viewed by selecting required mode here. This is reported action-wise as well as aggregated for individual sectors or all three sectors together. The financial assessment does factor cost escalations due to inflation. Generally, municipal projects with higher investments are funded through external funding sources like government grants and borrowings. Also, innovative approaches like private contributions either through PPP mode or beneficiary contributions can be explored. Provision is made here to formulate appropriate funding pattern for each improvement action. Under sources of funds, user can mention percentage share of funding possible from any of the sources suggested. The implication of these funding decisions will be reflected while preparing financing plan. Next sheet is on municipal finances. Based on trends for the past five years, municipal finance forecasting is done for business as usual scenario for both revenue and capital account. Financial details of ongoing or proposed projects of ULB can also be captured here. Finances for all three sectors, water supply, wastewater, and solid waste are referred together as WSS. Similarly, overall municipal finances for other sectors than WSS are projected under one category and referred as non-WSS. A summary of this WSS and non-WSS finances is provided in the end of this sheet. The last part of arriving at a sustainable performance improvement plan is formulating a financing plan addressing both capital plan and operating plan. For each plan, relevant sources of funds are aggregated to assess the adequacy of funds for meeting the expenditure requirement. Three major blocks of funds can be identified. The first block is assessed in terms of external sources of funds simulated in action plan finance sheet for grants, borrowings and public contributions. Second block of funds is own municipal funds from non-WSS sectors, majorly as income generated from property tax collection. Third block of funds is income generated from user charges and taxes collected on behalf of water supply and sanitation services provided by ULB. This block is crucial to assess operational cost recovery for WSS sector separately. Although WSS COPEX 
plan and capex plan have similar financing formulation sources of funds for each plan are of different nature opex plan must be met through internal sources of funds that is non wss and wss own income sources whereas capex plan can be funded through external sources as well for formulating wss opex plan internal revenue sources of funds can be enhanced either through proper pip action planning or by revising tariff structure this includes increasing taxes and charges or introducing new charges for property tax water supply waste water or solid waste services the corresponding impact of additional revenue generated can be visualized in supporting graphs this provides important analysis and assessment for more informed decisions for stakeholder consultation generally water supply and sanitation sector does not meet operational cost recovery from its own sources internal revenue surplus of non wss sectors is allocated to meet their expenditure demand a user is allowed to take decisions regarding extent of such allocations the impact of these financial decisions in reference to overall municipal finance can be viewed in the summary of municipal finance provided beside for formulation of capital plan external sources of funds calibrated earlier are reported here decision regarding the extent of revenue surplus transfer from wss and non wss is also taken here next is assessing sustainability of internal funds to meet debt servicing requirement for borrowings if ulb is not able to attain minimum dscr ratio for all the years financial plan must be altered so as to attain an acceptable financial status a feasible financing plan is one in which all the funding requirements are fulfilled and the municipal account shows overall surplus to evolve a feasible financing plan an iterative process is required with all the above steps as well as review of action plan a user might have to balance the proposed improvement actions and acceptable financial decisions to evolve a plan that you will be will be able to sustain in long run the financing plan and key financial decisions are summarized at the top of the sheet for both capital and operating plan in this manner a number of different pip plan options can be simulated in this pip model these options are summarized for analysis in pip options sheet the options developed to achieve the locally set sectoral vision and related targets for key performance indicators each improvement action comprises a discrete set of actions to achieve either different levels of improvement in service performance or use different feasible technologies to achieve similar performance levels the options may also be developed to either capture varying phasing of actions and a different timeline on service improvements or for varying financing arrangements for example the same technology option may also be captured by fully grant based financing pattern versus use of creative financing with contributions from private sectors and communities when it is not possible for the service providers to secure grants for large capital expenditure it enables an easy assessment of measures for increasing efficiency cost reduction in service delivery raising revenue sources and implementing low cost solutions that bring in significant improvements in service levels options are also assessed against sectoral achievements and financial feasibility amongst these options most suitable plan option can be selected for implementation by city it is suggested that this selection process must evolve from a rigorous consultation process of key stakeholders a plan devised through participatory process tends to be realistic implementable and long lasting hence the essence of pip model can be summarized by saying that it does not provide the best plan for a city but it facilitates the process of evolving a sustainable plan for the city